Now we're switching from, we started with non-designers designing care experiences, and then we moved into an exploration of pediatric experiences at um, LA Children's Hospital and UCSF. And now we're going to go into um, designing uh, and improving experiences for um, cancer patients and their caregivers. Um, I lost my mom to cancer last year, and I was a full-time caregiver for her uh, during the last two months of her life. And I was really amazed uh, with how wonderful the home hospice nursing staff and health aides were. They were with us every step of the way, and it was truly designed to optimize mm -hmm. her life and not just uh, her health, although the two are uh, interrelated, of course. Um, so I look forward to the insights of the upcoming uh, presenters. Uh, first, we're going to uh, hear from Adela Najati, and she is a healthcare architect and researcher at HMC Architects, and she has deep experience in healthcare. And she's going to be exploring um, you know, the convergence that's happening between environment, people, technology, that we're not looking at each of those things in isolation, but we're looking at them in relationship. So welcome, Adela, and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Amy. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you and we can see you. Do you have okay. slides? Yes. Um, so for, I uh, thank you so much for the introduction and hi everyone. Thank you for joining me for this session. Um, I want to start it with showing a very short video, uh, which introduces our study on empathy, uh, how the environment impacts a cancer patient's journey. And then I'll go through my slide. Okay, and if, if we can hear the video, great. I'll give you a thumbs up. If we can't, I'll give you a thumbs down. That would be great. I tried chat. this with, I test this, tested okay. it with uh, Ryan Hope. Okay, Ford. good, all right. <laughs> At HMC Architects, we consider ourselves visionaries committed to the health and wellness of our communities. We've dedicated our entire careers to healthcare design and planning, and we have an important responsibility to make sure that we're providing enhanced care for staff, families, and patients. I'm Chris Naughton. I'm the healthcare practice leader for HMC Architects. At HMC, we invest in research because we believe it brings real transformation. I'm Adele Najati. I'm a healthcare planner and researcher with HMC Architects. To truly understand and improve healthcare experience for our patients with cancer, we recently have done an in-depth research with some of our own HMC colleagues who have either been a patient themselves or had a family member in treatment. Their stories have become our lessons and their journeys will inform the way that we design healthcare facilities of tomorrow. After my husband's surgery, uh, he was taken to recuperate on the top floor of the hospital. When I would go to visit him, I was surprised to find out that he was in a room that had three beds. There was no privacy. Everybody's machines around us were beeping loudly. Another thing that really concerned me was that because the nurses were so busy, whenever my husband would push the help button, there was a very long time he had to wait to get a response. This made me feel like if I wasn't hovering over his bedside every moment, he might not get the care he needed. After my husband's surgery, we went to a post-op appointment in the hospital's cancer care facility. It was located, strangely enough, in the basement of the hospital. We looked around and went, man, this is where we're going to receive treatment from here on out. After we found out that my husband would need a second surgery, we decided it was definitely time to change hospitals. And when we did transfer, it was to a campus that was completely and entirely dedicated to cancer care. On the day of his surgery, we were even given free valet parking and sort of just the red carpet treatment as we walked in. After my husband's surgery, he was transferred up to his patient room and I was very excited to see that he had a room all to himself and it was a large room. He also had a dedicated nurse who only looked after him at all time. It was so peaceful and so different from the previous experience 
that my husband, it seemed like just having that better environment made him so he spent less time in the hospital and recovered more peacefully. Traditionally in healthcare, there's been a huge disconnect between emotional support and clinical intervention. You know, what's interesting to see is that over time, there's been a lot more attention paid to the whole health of the patient. The best cancer care programs support a person's emotional, spiritual, and physical needs. The staff-patient relationship is a key determinant for a successful outcome. A cancer diagnosis can turn lives completely upside down. Uh, with information and communication, you know, we can give these patients some sense of control. Our purpose is to create spaces that support a variety of patients. And lastly, we can't forget about the providers that see heartache and despair every day. They too need supportive spaces to regenerate and to provide them a sense of peace and calm. Okay, great. Um, hope um, you enjoyed the video. Um, uh, I just wanted to reiterate that at HMC, um, we are committed to deliver human-centric design, and we believe that research can help um, guide our process and measure our success. Um, and we conducted re this research because um, we felt that we have a very important responsibility um, to foster human um, experiences, healthcare experiences for all patients, uh, especially those with cancer. Um, and for this study, we invited our own HMC colleague, as I mentioned, um, who went through this journey either for themselves or with a family member. Uh, we received responses from a total of 12 individuals within the firm. In addition, we have interviewed two more individuals, uh, a cancer care provider who went through this journey twice himself, and a cancer care researcher who formerly worked at Cleveland Clinic. Uh, for this study, we implemented a very unique methodology called user experience mapping um, to understand and also visualize a cancer patient's journey. As part of this method, we collected data to very detailed interviews. Um, then the interviews, uh, the data were analyzed um, based on the stages of the care, the touch points, um, to understand patients' feelings, thoughts, and behaviors. Then we used graphics to visualize uh, patient pain points and needs. Finally, we identified those opportunities uh, to improve the patient experience. I wanted to show you all an example more in detail, an example of these uh, patient experience maps. This is Jillian's story. She shared it in the video. Um, the first section of each story is a visualization of the patient's or family member's feelings over time in different stages, showing the red and orange zone for feelings such as fear, frustration, being scared, nervous, hopeless, and green and blue zone for feelings such as being calm, supported, Com comfortable, satisfied, hopeful. And, and we try to add details by adding those nodes um, to our map with some text regarding these feelings. Then we added a row of information on reasons behind, behind each feeling to understand the why behind those moments of frustration and helplessness, and also the why behind those moments of happiness or satisfaction because um, it was very important to us to understand the why, because that could show us the opportunities for improvement in future. And we had a section on um, their thoughts, the question that they were asking themselves in each step of the process, because we wanted to understand those questions. And, and before, um, you know, because we wanted those questions to be answered before even they think about them. Then we have a section on their actions, what they did in HSW of the process. 
uh, from calling their friends and families for their guidance to driving hours and hours to a facility to get treatment or making follow-up visits. Um, we have a row of information on how different touch points, including people, technology, or built environment have impacted their experiences. And the most important part of this patient experience mapping is the section on opportunities. How can we improve their experiences? Some are related to the programs and policies, some are related to clinical operation, and some related to the built environment. After reviewing all the stories, uh, we summarized all the findings in one single table in the report, followed uh, by an ideal patient journey that summarizes our recommendation and our findings. Um, our hope is really we all, you know, as caregivers, administrators, operational managers, designers, can work as a team to implement um, the ideal journey to support patients and their families for better experiences and outcomes. So I wanted to just briefly go through the ideal patient journey and it's organized based on different stages of the care. Uh, but no matter how a patient journey shapes or forms over time, um, it starts with a very shocking, scary and concerning moment. Um, we learned that diagnosis is usually a long process with many steps in between and leveraging technology to streamline this process with opportunities to educate and uh, keep patients and their families informed about each step of the process are ways to alleviate that high stress level. And um, we found that sometimes our patients are more afraid of the consequence of cancer and their families than themselves and providing support that family needs to give patients that mental space that they need to focus on themselves is a key factor to improve their experiences at this stage. Treatment decision is a stage that we need to do everything we can, everything in our power um, to keep our patients and family educated about the treatment options and to build this system of trust to give them the confidence and assurance they need to make the decision and, and moving forward. Um, we have two important lessons um, that we learned um, for specifically this stage was patients prefer to receive all their cancer care services in one place. That was a confirmation of a previous study by advisory board with more than 1,200 uh, cancer patients that showed convenience and coordination are the key factors for their satisfactions as they prefer multidisciplinary care clinics and co-location of all the services in one building. And um, the other findings, it's a very small findings, but very, with a very huge impact. We found that patients appreciate a space to go to gather their thoughts after hearing hard news or receiving information that is difficult to digest and before heading back to public, leaving the facility and going back to their car. So a place that they can gather their thoughts before heading back to, um, you know, um, leaving the facilities basically. And the active treatment phase, um, it's one of those longest, you know, phases usually, um, but uh, will be a different experience depending on the type of treatment. It can be a one-time surgery, or, uh, or routine infusion or radiation treatments. In any case, it can be a very stressful you know, experience. Uh, we need to approach it from both macro and micro levels. Uh, what I mean is on a macro level, how patients get, get to the facility where they park or get valet parking, the wayfinding in the campus, as well as the building itself. And uh, to a micro level, how we design those individual treatment spaces for patient comfort, uh, for a personalized experience, 
or even a, a streamlined material management that impacts their experiences. Um, we need to design for flexibility because someday patients come and they're exhausted, they need quiet time and privacy. Someday they need that mental support by socializing and connecting with others. So in addition to patients, uh, we need to support families and staff because they are there to take care of our patients. Um, we need to provide ample um, family amenities at patient care side, and we need to support our staff um, by providing not only health promoting work areas, but also respite areas. And the last stage, um, with patients, families go um, through this journey every step of the process. Stage four um, can be the management and follow-up, but can also be the end of life for some of our patients. And we need to support family members who are uh, taking care of a loved one at home at this final stage and also after death. We need to provide mental health support for family members, especially young children losing one of their parents or siblings. And, um, and another important finding was uh, surviving cancer doesn't mean the end of this journey. We heard the biggest fear of um, cancer survivors um, is the fact that um, if the, you know, whether the cancer is coming back or not, so we wanted to give our cancer survivor that sense of being connected to the system, that there is a um, system in place to track their future follow-up visits, checkups, lab works, etc. And technology can have a great role here to streamline this process. Um, but um, at HMC, you know, um, along with all my colleagues, our genuine hope is that this stage will come with surviving this battle and uh, with a sense of relief, excitement and empowerment. With that, um, I would like to hear any feedback, any questions or comments. Yeah, we do have a couple of questions. Um, so Grant is wondering um, about uh, the influence of cultural and ethnic factors on certain steps in the journey, and how did you manage this variable in your research? So since our study was very, so uh, the number of people that we interviewed um, was very limited. The study, usually the um, methodology uh, allows for that limited number of interviews because you go very deep. Um, you know, and deep dive into their experiences. Um, so in terms of, and, and we, you know, we wanted to also, um, you know, control for all the demographic variables, um, including race and ethnicity and, um, and respect that and, you know, find their, um, you know, information there. So all of our, um, I believe, as I remember, we had, um, you know, different um, race and ethnicity in our um, participants. And most of those are reflected in the journeys that we published in our report. Basically, we have one journey for each individual in the report that shows um, how they dealt with uh, their experiences. And um, we just, you know, they're anonymous. We put a name for them and a description that um, shows their personalities and also their background. Um, so it's very obvious there, and we try to capture everything that are related to um, race and ethnicity as well. Yeah, it's it's a good example of you know how we can get so much insight through qualitative research and, mm -hmm. and focus on different types of users from every different angle, um, different types of people from every sort of angle. But mm -hmm. also, um, quantitative research could be a component as well, or mm -hmm. just commitment to ongoing um, inclusion through co-creation and t concept testing and additional research mm -hmm. uh, throughout mm -hmm. the process. So this was fantastic. I echo the comments of a of an attendee who says that they really love how you use the color in, in this map. And it, it's just um, a phenomenal body of work. Um, there are a couple of other questions in the chat, um, which you maybe could answer, uh, because we need to welcome um, our next couple of students. 
thank you so much, mm -hmm. Adela. It was just fantastic. And I am, um, I'm thank so happy. Thank you for the opportunity, Amy. Thank you. I appreciate it. I will respond to this question in the chat. Okay, perfect. <laughs>